start. Today's message is entitled The Fellowship of His Suffering. The Fellowship of His Suffering. Can we, can we repeat it? Fellowship of his suffering. Yes. We have been called into fellowship of suffering with Christ. And this is a message that many of us, many pastors, don't preach. They don't tell their church members the truth. That they have been called as an individual into a suffering with Jesus. And then when we talk about suffering, but before then our scriptures, we take our scriptures from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5 to 11. And then we we'll also read Philippians 3, verse 10. But when we talk about fellowship of his suffering, what do you understand by the word suffering? What did I stand by the word fellowship? Before then, I'll, before we read our scriptures, I would like to explain what the Bible means by suffering and then by fellowship. Then we'll read our scriptures. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The New Testament was written in the Greek language. So before we can have a clear understanding of what a text means, then we have to dig into the Greek Septuagint so we can know the meaning. The word fellowship, the Greek word for fellowship is koinonia. Say koinonia. koinonia. The Greek word for fellowship is koinonia. And koinonia means communion. Participation. Or to share. Koinonia. It means coin. Coin is K O I N O N I A. Koinonia. Koinonia. It means to communion, to participate or participation or to share. And I want to talk about fellowship. Uh, I want to talk about suffering. I don't understand the word suffering. The fellowship of his suffering. The Greek word written for suffering in the New Testament is kakopati. Kakopati. C K A K O P A T H E O. Kakopati. That means to suffer evil. It is also translated. To suffer hardship. So that means that the church or the Christian has been called into what? A fellowship of hardship with Christ. We have been called as a church to bear the burdens of Christ Jesus. We are going to suffer because we are Christians. We are going to go through hardship in life just because what? We have accepted Christ. Is that what the churches have been preaching? Is that what the pastors have been telling us? What we hear is we tell people to give their life to Christ. And that when they give their life to Christ, everything will be over. Their problems will be solved. The moment they give their life to Christ, they will be problem free. Who told you that? I'm not careful that. So when you tell the people best that, and one, they give the life to Christ when they come to church. One, two, three, they start to face hardship in life. What did they do? They still come to church. Because they didn't understand that they giving their life to Christ means that they'll be going through hardship, painful things in life. But when the pastor tells the truth, then hey, this is all the things that we'll be going through as a child of God. When that happens, they sit. Because they know that they are to go through and what they are going through, it is just a matter of time. People of God, 
You have been called into a fellowship, a communion. You have been called to share. We all know that Jesus Christ suffered a lot, isn't it? When he came to this world, Mario Dina, he was suffering a lot of things. He suffered hardship for our own sake. He carried the cross. He endured pain. He was insulted. He was disgraced. What happened to Jesus? He was humiliated. People looked down on him. He lost precious people. He lost his best friend, Lazarus. That was where we got the shortest verse in the Bible. And Jesus wept. He wept. building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Yes. Five, verse one to eleven. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. Yes. If, you, if we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If you are comforted, it, it is for your comfort, which produces in your patience endurance of the same suffering which we suffer. For And our hope for you is fair, because we know that just as we share in our sufferings, and so also you share in our comfort. We do not share, we do not want you to be on uniform, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experience in the province of Asia. We are under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despair of life itself. Indeed, we thought we have received the same things of you. But this happened that we must not rely on ourselves, but on God. Who raises the dead? Verse 10. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him, we have set out that he will continue to deliver us. As you help us by your prayers, that many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious labor granted us in answer to the prayers of men. Amen. 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 You see, over there, Paul was talking about suffering that we will suffer. He said they were under great pressure. So as a Christian, you will go through, you will be pressed. And there are times that you face pressure in life. Financial pressure, there will be financial pressure. At times there will be 
the sickness pressure at times they will fall sick at times they will pressure from home things will be going bad as a child of God pressure press but that is for your own good but that is what God has called you into let us see what the Bible said God reveals or shares with us about three great goals for our lives. Three great goals for our life. And we can see that one in Philippians. Let's read Philippians 3 verse 10. Philippians 3 10. I uh -huh. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Amen. Amen. Number one, that I may know him. Number two, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. These are the three great goals of God for our life, for every child of God. It's the will of God that we will know Jesus Christ. Let me ask you, do you know Jesus? How do you know Jesus? It's God's goal that we get to know the Jesus we are, we, are, we are worshiping, we are following. It is God's will for us to know about the power of Jesus, the power that he demonstrated on his day of resurrection. Thirdly, it is, his, it is his goal, his will, for us to know about the fellowship, the koinonia of his suffering. He wants us to know. And today, we want to focus on koinonia kakopati. That is what? The fellowship of his suffering. Because we have all together been called go through that. Jesus himself has admonished us that we should also carry our own cross. Do you know that in the Bible? Let's read Matthew 16 verse 24. What did he say? And then Mark 8 24. Matthew 16 verse 24. The verse 34 I read and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also he said unto them whosoever will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me amen, amen. if anybody will come to me what did he say let him carry his cross and do what and follow me. Are you ready to carry your cross? So there is a cross for every child of God to carry. I have my own cross to carry. You also have your cross to carry. That cross was the same cross that Jesus carried. And we have been told to what? To also carry the same cross. People of God. Cross is heavy. Hallelujah. The cross is what? It's heavy. The cross signifies death. The cross signifies pain. The cross signifies ashes. The cross signifies torture in life. When we come forward, when we come here, where's the Lord? The cross signifies torture. It signifies, it signifies pain. The cross is a symbol of disgrace. The cross is a symbol of shame. That Christ suffered. And Jesus. Told us plainly and 
and bluntly that if we must become a disciple, if we must be a Christian, if we must be his follower, we are up to carry our cross and do what? And follow him. So why do you don't think that when you give your life to Christ, then everything is going to be better automatic? Is that what the Bible is telling us? Is that what the Bible tells us? No. We are to endure the pain of the cross. There are times we go through disgrace. We go through pains. We go through tribulations as a child of God. It's like a baby. I can always say, but you have a Jesus also did the same thing. He carried his own cross. What did the Bible says in John 19, verse 17? Let's read. <coughs> John 19, verse 17. What did he say? John 19, verse 17. I read. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus carried his cross. The place called Golgotha. What the Bible tells us in the same place, Matthew 27, verse 32. Read again, Jeremy. Matthew 27, verse 32. What did he say there? Read. And as they came out, they found a man of Syrian, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that the cross was so heavy. Listen to me, look at me. The Bible says the cross was so heavy that even Jesus himself could no longer carry it again. Tradition, tradition holds is that Jesus fell down three times with the cross. But it was in Matthew that we had a record that he was no longer able to carry the cross. He was tired. He fell down on the road, helpless. And then they found a man of Africa called Simon. Simon of Cyrene. Cyrene is the present day Libya. So that means an African came to help Jesus to carry the cross. Now, my question to you this morning. What I want us to focus our attention on this morning is that if I am also a follower of Jesus and I have to accept the word, I have to accept Jesus Christ, and if I have to accept the cross of his suffering, then where is my symbol of Cyrene? Something that 
Great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Amen. You see, the other person will be born, but he will suffer. This is what he says to said about Paul. So he said, I will show you, I will show him the things that he will suffer for my sake. So as a Christian, you have been called to what? The fellowship of suffering. shall reveal you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets who were before you. 13. You are the salt of the earth but if the salt has lost its savour, how shall it be salted? It is therefore it is thereafter good for nothing but to be cast out and to be thrown up under foot of men. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, all ye who are bright in heart. Rejoice, rejoice, be glad in the Lord. Hey! 
into various trials, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, lacking in nothing. Amen. Amen. You see what I want to participate in the fellowship of his suffering. Because it is for your own good. The Bible says that all things work together for good, for the sake of those who love the Lord. The first of Christ's suffering is to make you humble in the sight of God. The first of Christ's suffering is to make is to work on your character as a child of God. So that the things that we go through makes us or tells us to be a better version of what God wants us to be. Have you seen an iron? Before you what? You 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 iron your clothes. The iron has to be blocked into a power source, which will generate a very strong and what? Hateful heat. Powerful heat. The heat will be so hot. And what does it do to your clothes? It will be pressing it. It will pressing it. It will pressing it. After some time, all the wrinkles of your clothes becomes what? Straight on. Then you put it on. When you put it on, how do you, how do you look? Splendid. Good. You see, but when you are ironing, the iron is hot. Your cloth will be undergoing heat and pressure, isn't it? But after the result, the end result of the iron or the pressing is the result of a perfect, beautiful, wrinkle-free dress. So this is the reason why Christians, God called us also go through suffering. Any child of God going through pain, any child of God going through suffering, any child of God going through hardship in life, is just a type of suffering iron cloth. You are the cloth, and the things you are going through is what? It's the hot iron that is pressing your clothes. That hot iron is pressing you. That problem you are going through is pressing you hot. That hardship you are going through is pressing. That bitterness is pressing you. All the pains of life, the tears of life, are all the trials that you are going through. They are pressing you. But the Bible says that all things work together for good. What is happening to you, it is not for your death. What is happening to you, it is not for disgrace. What is happening to you, it is for your own good. That God will make a way. The Bible says that, that after you have gone through all this suffering, you will come out like gold. You will come out shiny like diamond. So God of God, when you are going through tears, we are going through things that make you cry. Let me tell you something. Now the fact that the situation is so hard that you begin to ask yourself, where is my God? Where is my God? How long have you been believing God for a miracle? How long have you been going through suffering? How long have you been waiting on God? Just to help you with the fruit of the womb. How long have you been waiting on God to help you enter into marriage? How long have you been waiting on God to get admission? How long have you been waiting on God to help you? The Bible says that 
that your help comes from the Lord. God is your life and your salvation. You should not be afraid. All that you are going through is a matter of time. No fear no me no to be a day. How many can you feel me? Can you do that no you be a day? It's a matter of time. It's so painful that you lost a precious one. It could be your brother who is so precious to you. It could be your father. It could be your best friend. It could be so. Life. Jelebi, Saji. Jelebi, I will try. No, I will go here to Christ. Oh, tu to a Oh, you to a Oh, tell me, oh, oh, hey. Let me tell you something. It is a matter of time. Let us continue to have patience. You know what you are? What you are doing? What do you achieve? Christo, the battle of the Amen. Christo, the battle of the Amen. After that, you are the devil. You are the press of the world. What are you saying? You are the battle of the world. You are the battle of the world. You are the battle of the world. It is to our own good. We will do better our life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's close our eyes and pray.